Hey everybody, Hans here. Before we get started with the episode, I just want to take a moment to let you know how this episode came to be. There's a group on Facebook I belong to called Board Game Wishes, and the main purpose of that group is to, and I quote, loving on the board game community and spreading kindness. I, along with countless others, have been lucky enough to receive some of that kindness. And it isn't just the giving and receiving of gifts. The members of this group do a great job of supporting each other any way they can. So if you need some kindness or are in the mood to give some kindness, please consider joining the group. Now, on to the game. Released in 2017, designed by Rudiger Dorn, illustrated by Klaus Stefan, and published by Haba, KTCG is a spin-off of the board game of the same name. Like its predecessor, it wasn't solo friendly until a kind soul took it upon themselves to make it so. I will be playing Kevin Runs 262 solo variant today in this video. There's a link to it in the dis video description below. This solo variant allows you to play the game in about 25 minutes against an opponent with varying difficulties. Will this shoot off join the likes of Joni Loves Chachi, Joey, and Aftermash? Or will this game be able to hold its own unlike many spin-offs before? I'll let you decide as I solo play Karuba the Card Game. Hello everybody, here we have set up Karuba the Card Game for solo play. If you're familiar with Karuba the board game, you're going to see some very familiar things. You're going to see these, the tiles have been traded in for cards. Uh, but adventurers, gems, temples, that all is the same here. So in Karuba the card game, you are going to take turns, eight turns, in order to build your island map. When all said and done with your island map, you want to connect as many adventurers with their matching color temple. For each one of those you're going to get three points. For each gold nugget or crystal that you find, you're going to get either two points or one point along that path. At the end of the game, eight rounds, when we've played all our cards, all 16 of our cards, we're going to see who has scored more points, myself or my opponent, Rudiger. So, Karuba, the card game, is made up of three phases. The first is the draw card phase, which we do during prep. We draw, each time we draw, we're going to draw two more cards to add. So we have a total of three cards. After we draw cards, step two is going to be choosing two of those cards. I'm going to choose two cards to try to play and save one in my hand for the next round. During that time, I'm going to draw out two cards for my opponent, Rudiger. We're then what we're going to do is we're going to look at our values and whoever has the highest value gets to play both cards. Whoever has the lower value between the two cards is going to have to discard a card. For me, I would discard a card out to the side. It's out of the game permanently. And then I would place one of my temples or two if I, if I didn't have to discard into my island that I'm building. And this is going to be a four by four grid. Okay. Placement rules are important. Um, the numbers have to be uh, to be read, so you can't change the orientation like this, so you can't read the number. It has to be face up so you can read the number. Other important rules is after your first ones that are placed, you can build off of them from in any direction, but you can't build um, a placement like that. That's a, not a legal placement. Also, I couldn't say, okay, here's my first one. Well, this is where my next one is going to be, and eventually I'm going to fill in around it. It has to be connected to the previous one and so that you can read the number. Okay. After you've done the tile placing, after the three and choosing, you're then going to go start that again and draw back up to three cards uh, and make those choices again and again. So that's a nice quick overview of Karuba the card game. Let's get into gameplay so you can see how it goes. Um, early game strategy here. 15 and 9 is a really nice pairing. I should be able to get both of those out. It's really, really important. This doesn't give me any points, but it is a really nice thing for making connections and groupings. So I might need this one later. I definitely know I'll need these two. So I'm going to go ahead and say, you know what? I'm going to make sure I get, I'm going to try to get these two out onto my island right away. So I've got a total of 15 plus 9, which is going to be 24. So let's see what Rudiger puts out. He's got a 1 and 
a 9. Okay, so I have 24 and he has 9, which means I have more, which means Rudiger is the one who's going to have to discard. So let's talk a little bit about the difficulty settings here for Rudiger. Um, on the hardest setting, he has a priority. He's going to discard cards that have no crystals, gems, explorers, or temples on it first. Then he's going to get rid of crystals. Then he's going to get rid of gold. Then he would get rid of an explorer or a temple. They're, they're tied in priority. What you'd have to do there is check his discard and see if he had already discarded the purple, then the uh, and he had a purple and blue, but he had already discarded the purple explorer, his priority would be to discard the purple since he can't make that connection anymore. Okay, so that's the hardest difficulty setting. The easiest difficulty setting is I get to choose. If I want to get rid of this one, which is going to take three points away from him, that's what I would discard. I'm going to play on the, the, the difficult setting. So the priority would be uh, tiles with no gems on it, which he doesn't have. Then it would be tiles with crystals he doesn't have. Then it would be tiles with gold, and he does have that. So we're going to take this one and discard it. And this is a really big move for me because it's taking two points out of Rudiger's uh, a scoring pile, which is very nice. But this one's going to make it, and this is going to get put into a scoring pile. So if and when he dis er, gets the purple explorer, then he's going to match that and get three points. Okay, so these two are going to make it. So I'm going to place these out. This is, uh, I'm going to place that purple one there. And the purple comes from the right. And the, the gold comes from above. So I've got to make sure he's got access from above. So maybe you put that purple on the bottom. And orange goes up, purple comes in from this side. Okay, so I've placed my two cards. I like to keep track of what cards I've played using these cubes. They're not part of the game. I added them to it, but it helps me keep track of the, the number combinations, the likelihood of what what values I could have coming out so that I can deal with Rudiger, and my, my paths. I have to know if I have even the ability to make those kind of paths that turn or connect those things. So we've played. So the next thing, we're back to start one, which is going to be drawing your cards up to three. Oh boy, I'm getting a lot of getting a lot of adventurers. I I t do tend to like to get the temples out first, but because they they're usually on the inside, it's hard to build out from from that. So let's see. We've got a lot of our high numbers here, which is really scaring me because it's going to be harder to get some of these lower numbers out. So I need to make a combination of the two. So I think I'm going to do my 16 and 2. The only thing I'm thinking is maybe if I want to save that for that one, pair that 16 with that one. So let's do 14 and 2. I don't have a really plan, but I think we'll be able to figure it out of where to place it. I would think he's going to have to go in from, maybe we can get it like that, something like that. We'll take a look if we, well, I think it's hard to plan right now because I don't know if this is a 16th score where I feel like Rudiger could make me discard one of my cards. So let's see what he gets, 11. So if this is going to be five or more, I'm going to discard. 16, absolutely. So I'm definitely going to discard this too. Um, it gets me no points, which means I'm now going to place my four, or I'm going to go ahead and cover up that two. I'm going to place my 14, which I think, nope. If I go here, then I'd have to off branch to get my gold temple. If I go here, I'd have to go out this way. To get an, uh, I, I could maybe put the temple. No, I wouldn't have a really good spot. I guess I could put it here and hopefully have it there off to this side. I could also put it here and have it there. And then I could have my green come from somewhere else. Hmm. This is a tight fit with uh, starting in the middle with the adventurers is kind of tough. Maybe I'll do this side and have it come out there. There, there, there. And maybe green on that side. Okay, so we've placed. So Rudiger, he's not going to discard either one of them. So both of them are going to go into a pile. Right now, again, there are no points for him right now. But if he gets the gold explorer or the green temple, then he's going to uh, jump up to three to six more points. So we've placed in our island. Now we're going to redraw back up to our three. 
Okay, very good. I think I'm going to do this 12 and 8 for 20. I hope I get both of those out there. I think this would be a really nice one to get the idea of how I'm going to make this all work together. So now we're going to draw for 2 for Rudiger. That's 13. This has got to be a 7 or less. Okay, we got him. 15. So although he doesn't lose any points on this one, I'm at least going to be able to play both of mine. Oh, I forgot to cover up our 14. We've got four cards played, one in the discard, three on our pile. We've got four cards covered up. So I'm going to get to place both of these. I had talked about the green going here because he's going to come down. So then the question is, can I go here for my purple? Or do I want to go there for my blue? And put, uh, put my blue there. I can go over there and put my purple there. I think either one of those really works. Let's do that one just in case. Okay, we've placed our two tiles. We were able to place two, and now we're going to draw back up to our three. Got our gold temple, our blue temple, and our, we got a lot of big numbers here. Oh, we've got to cover up our eight and our 12 that we placed out there. So we've got one, two, three options. If I place him here, that can reach down there so I can leave a gap there to get a crystal with him. Here I can't leave a gap. It's got to be one, two, three, four. I can't go top or bottom anymore, so that would have to go there. And this blue one, one, two, three, four, I could can't place there. So I think we're going to go with the... 11 and 16. Where did I want to put my blue? Blue is definitely going to have to go there. If I did it, and I would put my green there. And that would give me one, two, three. I'd have to put my purple there, it would be four across there, and my gold tower up there, one, two, three, four. So that might be what we do here. We'll do the 16 and 10. Try to get those closer to those connections. So we got 26 showing. Let's see what Rudiger has 15. And 12, 27, and I had 26. Ouch. Whew, I'm losing three points on this one. That's for sure. Let's do, that's going to get me three. If I can get another crystal here, this will at least be a four point, four or five point uh, score. Oof, that really hurt. That Rudiger, that Rudiger really screwed me there. So I got my 10 and my 16 place. Both of these make it in there for Rudiger. I'm going to draw back up to three. Okay, there are three cards. Let's see here. One, two, three. Can't put anything there to connect that. Four. I'm not going to be able to connect that blue anymore, so that doesn't do me any good. I suppose I'll definitely put him that one there. And then one, two, three, four. I can go there and maybe put my purple there. Let's try to do that so I can get two points there with purple. The only other option would be here to make sure I get an extra point there. but. Five would be covered. We still have got six and one as options to get in between there. So let's do let's do that five and eleven, which is going to give us sixteen. Eight halfway there and fourteen. Ugh, Rudiger, you're such a jerk, man. So he's got more with twenty-two than my seven sixteen. So I've got to discard another card. I'll be putting this one up here. I'm covering, discarded the five, got the 11, and he's going to put both of these in his score pile. I'm going to draw back up the three. Okay, so we need this six. It's one of our last two options to try to get something there. So let's do our six and 13. That's going to give us 19 points. 10, oh gosh, and 7. Whew, just beat them. So this is going to get discarded. This is going to get put into a scoring pile. 
I'm going to be able to place a 6 and my 13. I said I was going to put my 13. Can't put it there anymore. Oh, I could do like that. That's good too. And we're still within one. Oh, you can't really see that. Hold on. So I was saying with this 13 and 6 to put them here, because now she's got a path there. And that's going to be a 3, 4, 5 point path. 3. And I, oh, this is the other one that I'm going to be able to get. 1, 2, 3, 4. 1, 2, 3, 4. So I'm within my 4x4 four four grid, so we're good there. So the last one I've got to get out is number 1, I think. I think that's the last one where I can, can get some points out of it. So I'm going to draw back up to 3. There they are, 1, 7, and 4. I think, oh yeah, that, that one there. Oh, I need to also connect these two. I don't think I'm going to be able to do that. So let's have said we put, ugh, I think it would have been like this, right? If I do that, then I don't have anything to play for in the next one. But here, do I, I have to put the one there to connect it, because I don't think I have any other ways to connect, which means I'll have to put the three there. So we'll discard, we'll say it's one and seven. I'm probably going to have to discard stuff, but at this point it doesn't really matter that much, except I would like to take some points from him. Nope, 9 to 7, or 8, so I'm going to discard again. I discard this one. I'll put that there. So now this was a waste. She's not going to, she's going to take this path instead. Because I don't think, what do we have left? No, the 3, and yeah, none of them, none of them are going to make that turn for her. So we got to place that one there. So 1 and 7 are out. So we're down with 2 cards, 3 and 4. Oh, both of these are going to score for Rudiger. Right? No. Yes, I discarded. My last two cards, I'm going to play these two. If he's got more than seven, I'm discarding one, which is fine. He's got nine. He gets to keep both of them. I'm discarding this four, and I'm going to play this three right there. Okay, so we kept it within our 1, 2, 3, 4, 1, 2, 3, 4, our 4x4 four four grid, so we're going to be able to score everything we can in here. We've got three points to make this connection, another three makes six for that connection, and then another six ma three makes nine for that connection. I now have two gems that are along the way. I can't double back and double loop. It's a straight shot, so I'm going to get another three points there. So I'm going to get three, six, nine, 10, 11, 12. So I scored 12 points in mine. There were two rounds I can remember where I lost really important cards. This this 10 I felt was a really tough one. Um, and I think there was another one where I needed a connection. But uh, what did I say, 12 points. So now we're going to take a look at Rudiger's points. So he's going to get 3, 6, 9, 12, 13, 14. That's been Karuba, the card game, a nice, quick, solitaire version of it. I think it's fantastic to draw two, pick two out of three, see if you have more value, place one or two on your temple. Really, really fun here. I think it's a really fantastic little game. Um, I love the strategy and planning out what cards I've I've used already from my tableau to decide what routes are realistically to build. I found out early that it was going to be really hard to make this one, but because of card order, I had to place this one first, which was now a waste, where if I could have placed it there instead and then placed her, then I could have gotten another point, uh, one more point closer. And you see, the, the they're going to always be tight, so it's going to be small little things like that that make the biggest difference. Well, that's been Karuba the Card Game. I hope you've really enjoyed it. I know I do. So until next time, we'll see you later.